it's Judy from Patterns for Pirates. I'm sitting down to talk with you about the fabric choices and supplies you'll need for the classic sports bra. I'm going to start off with some of the notions you'll need because I think you'll have the most questions about those. Um, there is an option for the classic sports bra with a hook and eye bra back closure. Really love this option. It's not difficult to sew the hook and eye bra closure on and it makes a sports bra so much easier to get on and off especially if you're curvy and you have a much bigger full bust to your under bust it makes it so much easier to get on and off I love sports bras with this option so that's why I added it and I hope that you enjoy it too I'm going to talk about some options that you can find out there First, I'm going to show you the three options that I have in the patterns. So for youth, I have the small one, one by three option, or I have the two by three option. For the adult, I have the two by three option, and then I also have a three by three option. In the pattern, I use elastic and underband um, piece that are the standard sizes to these. So for this teeny tiny one, we're gonna use a very small three eighths inch elastic and the band will wrap around that, have a small seam allowance, and fit inside this teeny tiny one. Same goes for these. Um, all of the one by three hooks that I happened to order were all exactly the same height. So all of them were very, very, very close, exactly the same and their height. They're also a tiny bit harder to find, I think, in anything other than black or white or beige. Now, the two hooks. Two hooks seem quite easy to find. I found them in an array of colors. I also found them an array of options. Um, so I'm going to show you a few of those. So here is what I found to be the standard, a two by three. It's around an inch big. It's a little over an inch, I think an inch and a quarter. Um, and so this is what I drafted the elastic and elastic band to. So you use a three eighths inch and the, most of these you just open up. Slide your band in and sew it closed. So this is the standard, and um, this is the size elastic you use. You notice there's about a quarter of an inch at the top. It's a seam allowance for your band. So it allows for a seam allowance and then a tiny bit of wiggle room so that you can slide it in there. Same goes for the three hook. You use one and a half inch elastic. The band has a small seam allowance so that when you slide it in there, you have room for your elastic, the small seam allowance, and a teeny tiny bit of wiggle room so that you can, in fact, slide it in. Some of them have different closures on the hook side. So some of them have this one where, just like the loop side, you slide your elastic in. Some of them have one like this, where it opens completely up for you to sandwich it in and close it on. Another difference you can find are how many columns it has. So here is a two by three, again. And here is a two by two. 
So it only has two columns compared to this one that has three. So the three is going to give you more wiggle room on tightening and loosening than the two will. Either will work fine for the sports bra. Some other things you can notice are that some of them have um, metal and some of them have coated. I believe these ones are meant to be stronger. I don't think you need to look for one compared to the other for this sports bra pattern. Another thing to notice is that not all of them are the standard height. So here's our standard height one. This is also a 2x3, just like this one. But as you can see, it is wider. So, does not mean you can't use it. But what it does mean is that if you want to use this wider or taller hook and eye, you're going to have to modify what size elastic you use and how tall your band piece is. So here's our normal one. It's meant to go with three fourths inch elastic perfectly. Your seam allowance is a quarter of an inch at the top. This one is about a quarter, quarter of an inch taller. So I can use a quarter of an inch taller elastic. So I could use an inch elastic. And then to my knit band piece, I'll need to add a whole half inch because it wraps around both sides of the elastic. So quarter of an inch on this side, quarter of an inch on the back side. I need to add a half inch so to make sure it's tall enough to wrap around. And then it will be perfect. And you can use this one. Um, I found that although most of them are this smaller one, I, I could find quite a few fun colors in the little bit wider ones. And so I, I'm not going to tell you not to use these because they're great colors, right? So you can use these wider ones. Just make sure you measure them. And if they are not the standard height that the pattern is drafted for, you just have to do a quick little math so that you don't construct your entire bra and then find out that it doesn't fit perfectly. Same goes with the three row. Most of my three rows were about two inches tall, which is what the pattern is drafted for. So you have an inch and a half elastic, then you have your seam allowance plus a tiny bit of wiggle room so you can actually slide it into the hooks. But I did find some of them are called three wides and it's a tiny bit wider. So if you want even bigger elastic than one inch, you can look out for that and only get the wider ones. Or maybe you just found a fantastic color in a wider one. All you have to do is spend some time doing a little bit of math on how much taller it is than the standard and how much wider you can make your elastic plus the seam allowance. So any that you find, you can use. You just have to make sure if it's different from the height drafted on the pattern that you modify it slightly to use the correct um, with elastic and that your band then coordinates with your elastic width as well. Okay, the other notions that you'll need besides your underbust elastic is elastic for the edges, for the neckline, the arm size. The reason why you want elastic is because you want it to fit snug, you want it to hold tight, and you want it to be stable to help hold everything up. Um, what you can use in order from least stable to most stable in my mind is clear elastic. Um, I find this plenty stable for myself. Um, nice and easy to find. Um, swimwear elastic. I super love the cotton swimwear elastic. I think it's super easy to work with. It is a little thicker, so your seams will be thicker. 
Um, it's very durable and nice and stretchy and comfortable. Another one is a braided knit elastic. I do suggest a knit elastic. You need it to be quite stretchy because it is a very fitted garment already. Um, I do not have any on hand. I happen to be recording this during the COVID-19 quarantine and there's no quarter inch elastic to be seen anywhere, I don't think, um, that hasn't already been used to create mask. All of mine has been used for that um, and that's okay. In the future, when you can get your hands on quarter inch elastic again, you can use a knit braided elastic. That will be the most stable. It'll also be thicker like this one where. So depending on what you're wanting, you might want the clear elastic to be a little bit thinner and um, not be as bulky. If you want it as stable as possible, then I would suggest using a cotton knit elastic. Um, all right. Speaking of stability, another thing you might want to add to the adult is an inner lining. I have this as an option in the pattern. This is a power mesh. This will add some stability. Um, what you want to do is cut it with the greatest stretch going horizontally and having the least stretch vertically. What that does is it adds some stability from things bouncing vertically. Power mesh. This would be power net. Hopefully you can see the difference in the two. Here's a power mesh. Here's a power net. So this one's much more dense and tightly woven. Um, same thing, you want it to have the most stretch going around you horizontally and the least stretch going vertically. The power mesh will add a little bit of stability. The power net will add even more. So from the most comfortable to the most stable, I would say is nothing, no inner lining. Second would be power mesh. The most stable, most compressive, tight feeling would be power net. All right, let's jump into some fabrics. For the lining, my very favorite is to use a poly swim lining. Um, it's got a cottony feel and it's nice and inexpensive and you don't see it at all, so it doesn't matter. I try to use this lining whenever I can um, and keep my more expensive fabrics for the pretty outside that you see. You can self-line on any of it. If it feels good against your skin, it's fine. Um, this is a thicker cotton spandex. Um, I love this for my youth, for my daughter. She doesn't really sweat a ton, so it doesn't really need to be moisture wicking because she's not sweating very much. Um, it would also make a fabulous lounge wear. Um, another one that I don't have over here that would make a good lounge wear would be a brushed poly, a double brushed poly. It's a little warm and thin for workout wear, but for lounge wear it would be great. I do have a double brushed athletic poly knit here. Um, the difference to me being this is a little bit thicker. Um, it's nice and soft, it's nice and comfortable, very stretchy. Um, I find it a little warm because it is poly and it is brushed. So um, I prefer this more for lounge wear or for winter months. I live in Texas where it's really hot most of the year. I can't work out in this most of the year unless I'm either in the AC blowing or um, it's really cold outside. It's a nice um, base. I have another brushed, I believe this is a poly athletic knit from Joann's. It's really thick and it's got a lot of um, spandex in it. It's a super high quality, um, but it is brushed and I still feel like this is either an inside workout or a colder month workout. I couldn't wear this working out, especially like a full legging in the, in, in the Texas heat. But this is another great option for um, if you live in a colder climate or if you're working out inside in a gym or your house. I'm going to go with one more warmer option. This is a fleece backed 
spandex athletic knit. One warning that I'll give is some fleece back spandex knits do not have as great of a stretch. Um, now you can use this to your advantage if you really like a tight compressive style sports bra. I um, used a tighter, less vertical stretch on my center panel on some of them. And what this does is it has even less, it has less vertical stretch, much like the power net. So it gives a compression style um, sports bra for a little bit higher impact. More stability, but it is a squashing stability. So you have to know if you like that or not. If you don't like feeling squashed, you're gonna want to keep all the vertical stretch in all your fabrics. You're not gonna like the feel of power net or a less vertical stretch fabric anywhere. If you like the compression style to keep everything snug and tight and a little more stable, then using a fabric with less vertical stretch is gonna be something you're gonna like. You cannot go to zero stretch though. It won't stretch down to underneath your bust. A little bit less vertical stretch is okay. None is not gonna fit. It's not gonna work out. Okay. Next, I'm gonna show you an option that can open up a lot more availability to you, and that is using a swim knit. So this swim knit, this is a um, fun little swim knit. I like swim knits. The only reason I tend to prefer athletic knit over a swim knit is swim knit tends to be thinner and it tends to have a bit more shine to it. Other than that, it's moisture wicking, it's nice and stretchy, it's smooth, it's silky, it's not hot. It's got a lot of good qualities. It's easy to find usually too. The only things that I don't like about it is usually it's a little thinner and a little shinier. We're down to my last and my favorites. These are nylon athletic knits. I happen to love a nylon athletic knit. It's not brushed, it's never hot, actually feels almost cool to the touch. It's smooth faced, again, so not brushed at all, but it is matte, it's not shiny in any way also tends to be thicker than swim knit because if it's labeled an athletic knit, um, it's usually a little bit thicker. So even though this one it has some light colored spots, it's very thick. It's very stretchy. And um, I find that, again, nylon to be one of the coolest fabrics to wear. And I live in a hot climate, so that's important to me, especially when I'm working out. It's also moisture wicking, just like a, a swimsuit would be. Um, it's my favorite. A lot of people really love a poly based as well. I just happen to love nylon better. Um, for the sports bra, the more stability you want. You want the thicker fabrics. So um, something to look at is how thick they are, um, how much they weigh per yard, because the thicker, usually the more stable they're going to be. Um, but this is my absolute favorite. Um, you'll find it under Nylon Athletic, can also find it under suplex. Suplex tends to be a little bit thinner actually in most cases, but it has a really high spandex content. So even though it's a little bit thicker, it holds its shape very well. It tends to be more compression style. So if you don't like that, you want to watch the spandex content in your athletic knits. The more spandex it has in there, the tighter and more compressive style it's going to be. Same with the thickness. I like a thick fabric for my athletic wear, but if you don't like it tight and compressive, you might not prefer that. All right, guys, I think you're ready to pick the perfect fabric and make a great classic sports bra, and I can't wait to see it.